Hi, Tom Bartels from growfoodwell.com. I just wanted to get a brief video out to you guys today to talk about compost as we're all getting ready for spring planting. And what I'm going to do is turn this compost pile today. It's in its final turn of the season. And each of these compost bins uh, has a little bit different material in it, and they're at different uh, parts of their cycle as they're breaking down. This one is a little bit hot. It's got some chicken uh, litter from the chicken coop in it, so it's a little hotter than most of the regular vegetable-based compost. It's got a bunch of wood chips in there as well that are breaking down quite nicely, but it peaked at about 160 degrees for several weeks, so it's a pretty hot pile. Then it kind of tapered off at about 140. It's presently at about 130, and so you're going to see a bell curve on any compost pile where the bacterial activity peaks and it stays hot for a while as it's breaking down material, and then it'll taper off at the end. And what that tells you, if you've got a good compost thermometer and you're kind of tracking it along, is when to turn the pile. And you'll turn it after it's kind of tapered off and it's leveling off on the other side when it cools down. That means that bacteria is slowing down the activity and breaking down that particular material. And you want to reinvigorate the pile by working in all the material that's on the outside of the pile back into the middle. And it'll regain that bell curve. It'll heat up the second and third time, but not quite as hot. And each time you'll see a, a smaller curve and it'll take shorter periods of time for that to peak and drop off. So that's what's going on with these bins. This one's kind of hovering at 110 or so. It's almost ready to turn, but not quite. But on these piles over here, it's ready to turn on its last time. It's now tapered off to about 70 degrees, so it's coming down pretty fast. I'm going to turn this and reconstitute the pile so that the uncomposted material on the edges gets back in the center. I'm going to add a little bit more water and get it going. And in a couple weeks, it'll be ready for the spring planting, and I can use this compost in the garden for the seedlings. Now, if all this scares you and you don't really have time or space or energy right now to build a compost pile, or you're not a big compost geek like me, uh, that's fine. You don't really need one to start out. It's nice to have, eventually, in some form or fashion, a compost pile somewhere near your garden. Um, I went several years doing biointensive gardening without having my own good compost pile. I had one that was pretty weak, but not like this. It's perfectly fine to start out with buying bagged compost at the local garden center. You'll have plenty of other things that are going to take up your time when you're initially starting up a vegetable garden. It's just something to think about for the long term. And they make all different sizes. You can have screen ones, small tumblers, all different types of designs. And we'll talk about that later during the class. But in the meantime, make sure you've got all your seeds ordered and they're at least on their way. You don't want to be waiting for those later. And you've got your general garden location picked out and you've got a general game plan for how you're going to deal with preparing that soil for spring planting. And also make sure you know what your freeze dates are in your particular location. There are blog posts and videos on all those steps on growfoodwell.com. And if you're on this list, you already know how to access that information. I just want to make sure you're ready for planting this season. Of course, if this is all too much work for you or you have a bad back and you can't move the pitchfork, you can always take the lazy way out and go for a worm bin. What the worm bin will do is allow you to break down all your vegetable matter throughout the winter by using several thousand employees that work just for food scraps. So we'll talk about this in the class as well. Worm bins are always another good option. I have both because I like doing different things with the compost. We'll be going over all these steps as well as all the other necessary steps for a fully fledged vegetable garden in the classes that are coming up in a couple weeks. So stay tuned for that. But that's all for today. Thanks for listening.